Hey everybody, welcome to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out to pinch, and also got out and played a fantastic game of Airsoft this last weekend. I'm your host, Jonathan Higgs, and yes, I actually got out. I went to actually Airsoft GI's BB Wars series, and it was the Water Wars at Rockahula Water Park. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with what Rockahula was, and I really didn't know what it was till I've been traveling here in Southern California, it's a huge abandoned water park in the middle of the desert. It was so much, like, so much fun. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have the water slides. They've torn those out, but everything else is there, like the Lazy River. It's, of course, empty. It's all dry up, like where the wave pool was, like all the stuff where they used to have the slides, like that would mount, like where you'd go and start the slide down. All of that was there, including this massive hill. A ton of fun. So stay tuned. I'm going to have some footage up for that very, very soon. In fact, I might even get it up here the next couple weeks, kind of break up the Uprising gameplay. So like finish up Uprising this week, then jump into a couple episodes of it, and then go back into Uprising to round it all out. So yeah, stay tuned on that. Ton of fun. If I met you guys out there. For those that did stop by, thank you for coming and hanging out. I had a blast playing with you and getting shot by you, as you can kind of tell here. I've got some some wounds here. I got wound. I got wounds all over. Man, like everything from my knuckles to my back and all that. But anyway, enough of that. Um, no big huge news this week is high from me actually getting out and going playing a fun day of airsoft. So we're gonna jump into the, your questions. But before that, if you guys want to get your question on the show, it's super easy. All you gotta do is just put it in the comment section below. Vote up your favorites. So I hit that little thumbs up button on those, and they will hopefully get on the next show. I read every single question. I try to pick out the best ones each week, but there are so many good ones. So just keep being persistent if you don't get it on this show or the next show. I do remember every single one of them and I will get to yours sooner than later, I promise. So enough of that. Let's dive on into what you're really here for and that is the Palco Mail Call. AZ Airsoft writes, how likely is it to chip a tooth when getting hit in the mouth? I don't wear a mask anymore. I'm kind of nervous at big games. So me personally, I never play without a mask. And you're probably going, well, Jonathan, you just told me you got shot in the face. I actually had a mesh mask on. I had goggles on. Um, I was running. It kind of slipped down just a hair. You know, masks aren't perfect. There's never a perfect cheek weld there. Uh, there's small gaps and a BB got in. I think this is actually just one hit that hit hit the inside of my mask and then bounce down again. So the way it's kind of set up there, because I don't think the gap was that big. But that said, hey, look, it's that far from your teeth. Now, how likely is it to get your tooth shot out? Um, it can happen. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen probably seven, maybe eight times in my airsoft career. Actually seen people on the field, put their hand over their mouth, and come off with either a chipped tooth in their mouth, they spit out, or it's gone. The part of the tooth is gone. Funny story, if you guys are an old podcast listener uh, and you go way back in the day when I used to do the podcast, one of the guys on there actually got his tooth shot out in a game, went back home, two weekends later went back out to play airsoft and got the fixed part of his tooth shot out again, the exact same one. I'm not kidding you. Did not wear face protection the second time. So needless to say after that he did. So lower mesh mask, at bare minimum, get a really good like those um, football rubber mold yourself kind of uh, tooth guard things. Those do help, they're still not perfect, but you definitely wanna wear some kind of face pro, because I don't know about you, dental work is not cheap. Nate Andrews writes, hey Jonathan, during a Milsim event, how does it work if you need to fill up an HPA tank? Like are there stations on the field or how does it work? So this is a good question. Depending on the Milsim event you're going to, you may or may not have it. American Milsim does bring along a fill station with them. So you will have a compressor in place, but even with that, there's only certain times it's gonna be manned. There's not like somebody sitting there by that thing all day for the entire weekend. So you may end up kind of waiting for that tank fill. So. With that in mind, you're gonna want spare tanks. Definitely wanna bring some spare tanks with you. A lot of guys bring scuba tanks with them too, like to actually use a scuba tank as a fill station to fill your smaller tanks on the field. That does work and actually works pretty darn well. You can get actually a handful of fills um, off of one of those, which should get you through the weekend, depending on how trigger happy you are. Now, if you're running a support gun, you might be in a tough way. I mean, really as awesome as Polar Stars or HPA guns or, or you know Wolverine or any of those brands out there are, for a support gun, it's like what they're made for, then you're gonna have a tough time with air control. I was gonna be honest with you there. So keep in mind, if you are going to Milsim event, bring spare tanks, make sure you have those ready. Remember, you cannot fly with a filled tank. So you're gonna have to ground ship those things ahead uh, or take it to with you uh, like in a car or something like that. So it does get logistically tough to do HP at a uh, big Milsim event. But that said, I see a lot of people running it. And if you're not so heavy on the trigger, you can do a good time. 
Go Airhead writes, what's your opinion on enforcing tournament locks on Polar Star users, FCU locks too? So let me hit on what a tournament lock is and an FCU lock is so you guys know, because a lot of people may not own a Polar Star or an HPA gun. And this isn't just Polar Stars. It's Polar Stars, Wolverines, V12s, you, anything, you name it when it comes to HPA. So a tournament lock goes on your tank's regulator. So like the big air tank, you got a regulator up top. That regulator allows you to turn up the power, turn down the power, basically adjust the pressure or the, the amount of air that goes through the system. So higher the PSI when you turn it up, the harder the gun shoots. The lower the PSI, the softer the gun shoots. So when you go in chrono, there's usually holes on these on a tournament lock and the chrono person will zip tie the lock shut. It will actually make it so you cannot turn up or turn down your gun at all on the field. And it's a special zip tie they should be using just so they know it's like a certain color for that day so people can't cheat. Uh, the second thing with the FCU lock, it essentially does the same thing for your fire control unit or your fire control system. So you can't adjust the rate of fire and go, okay, well I chronoed it 20 BBs a second and now I'm gonna turn it to 50 BBs a second so I can hose people down. Um, or adjust some of the other settings inside of the control unit where you can kind of tweak your FPS there. There's some things you can do to kind of tweak it in that area. So those two things, absolutely, I think are critical. Uh, there's so much bad press going around with HPA today and it's because of just a few bad apples. There's just a couple out there that are ruining it for all the people that have HPA. So I think these two things are critical. Um, to go one step further, I think chronoing with really heavy BBs because of the way uh, HPA systems specifically and gas systems work, um, forcing those users, uh, even when I go out there and chrono with, uh, with mine, to use a heavier BB, even like a four, a 0 0.40 gram BB, uh, and using jewels. I'm not gonna get into the jewel thing, I've actually answered that in a couple of uh, uh, shows many, many moons ago. But yes, doing jewel chronoing versus actual FPS chronoing. So all that in, I think all those stop gaps as an industry standard would help ruin that or get rid of that bad stigma that HPA users and HPA systems have in Airsoft right now. Well guys, that's it for questions this week, which means it's time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one comes from UF Pro. Now, this one is actually a commercial for a product. So that aside, which it looks like some cool stuff. I personally never bought any of their things and they're not paying it to be on here or anything like that. It's called the Anatomy of combat and I just uh, was shown this video by Robo Murray and if you guys don't know Robo check his channel out seriously Robo does some seriously cool reviews and some great gameplay and things like that love the guy he's out of Canada good buddy of mine actually he sent this link over he's like man you gotta check this out super cool hand-to-hand -hand combat definitely I think some Krav Maga growing on here Krav Maga 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 I guess I don't know can't get that word out uh, but yeah it's really cool like hand-to-hand -hand combat with weapons and it, like guys sneaking out uh, like you don't feel like you're watching a commercial for the product I just want to watch this thing because it's some cool hand-to-hand -hand military combat stuff shot really cinematic and slow-mo so definitely check it out I'll have a link like always down in the description below it's called the anatomy of combat well guys that's it for this week as always thank you for being here remember put that question down there vote up your favorites to get on the next show also don't forget I'm almost out of airsoftology patches so if you guys haven't checked it out it's airsoftology.com slash store um, I think I have like 30 left of the yellow ones and maybe like 40 or 50 left of the brown ones they are almost gone that's the classic low if you guys notice I got a new logo that's the old one when they're gone I don't think I'll be bringing it back for a while so if you guys have been holding out for a yellow one for the classic airsoftology logo it's going to be a while before you see those back in the shop but uh, I got some plans already already on order for something new here it's not it'd be cool you guys are gonna like it it's a little different but still a lot the same so anyway i'll see you next week here in the show but until then go out play some airsoft have some fun try not to get shot in the face but no matter what you do call your freaking hits